we noticed in the last few days how many things you just took for granted. Just the ability to, to go for a walk, to talk to people, to go and visit your relatives, to fly wherever you want, just get on a plane, and go visit anywhere, anyone you want. See the Redwood Forest, go and see the Niagara Falls. Next year I'm planning a trip to, to Ethiopia. I'm going to Israel. How easily we moved around. What about other things like just going out to eat? Food was not available at home, we just went out, right? Yeah, I, just, I, feel, like, I feel like eating Chinese. I feel like eating uh, Ethiopian today. Now let's drive down and do something. Going on vacations, just going out for the weekend. Soon it might even be difficult to step out of the house. Right now, we haven't got the shelter in place um, order, but still, many of us have been confined to the home. And it's not easy. It's not easy. When something is forced on you, there is an inner resistance to what is. So something inside of you is saying, no, this should not be happening. I don't need to be here. I should not have, this should not have happened to me. I don't like the way I'm working. I don't like how things are happening. needs to change. All suffering stems from saying no. Not saying no out verb verbally, saying it inside. When you don't like what's happening, the inner vibration, the inner voices that are coming up that keep resisting what's happening, that is what gives rise to suffering. And it's very easy to, to be happy. All you need to say is yes. All you need to do is to accept your situation. And once you accept your situations, you can find so many different ways to reinvent yourself. If you're feeling stifled, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling constrained, it's because you don't want what's happening. It's different. It's not what you're used to. You're used to going to work. For a lot of young people, they go to work and if they have children, it's the nanny that's taking care or it's daycare. Children are put in daycare. And now there's a lot of pressure on them to take care of their own children and work full time. And it's not easy. And it's not easy. I agree. So many couples are doing things like working half day, uh, you know, one person takes care of the kids in the morning and the other takes care of the kids in the afternoon. You make adjustments. But you make those adjustments with a smile on your face, not feeling resentment, not feeling, oh my God, what's happening? Because the more you build inner pressure, the more you build the negativity, the more your immune system gets depressed. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you're not feeling good, when you're not feeling good mentally, you know, internally, it shows in every part of your life. All our suffering, all our suffering comes from saying no. And it's the inner resistance to what is that holds us back from doing different things, from trying different things, from being, you know, innovative and, 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 and you know, Sometimes doing nothing is okay. Just think about it. For the last so many years, you all have been chasing these ghosts of goals, right? Working morning to night, working morning to night. What are you doing? Or 
what are you doing? This is the time the universe has told you, now rest. Now relax. Stay at home and by doing so, you are helping the community, you are helping everybody because this virus spreads only through contact, through you going out of your house. So if you are happy, if you are content being at home, accept that this is your life for the next couple of weeks, then you can only feel inner joy. There is nothing to say that, you know, it's only when you're thinking, oh my God, I need to eat something, I need to go out, I need to change this, that you feel the anxiety. I need to be working, what's going to happen about my money? You know what? All of that's the future. All of that is happening there. Right now, you are at home. If you're alone, it's a little more difficult, I admit. But I've found that in the, I mean, my life, think of my life, on a normal day, I don't go anywhere to work. I don't go out and meet anybody. I don't talk to anyone other than maybe if my kids call me. But now I'm on Zoom. I'm talking to all kinds of people. In fact, my social interaction has become so much more. My physical interaction may not be that much. But my social interaction is wonderful. I'm reaching out to so many more people. I've called a lot of the elderly people older than me. I'm, I'm elderly, uh, old, old myself. There are lots older than me that are scared and are, and are alone. And reach out to them. Give somebody a call. Make them feel good about, you know, talk about normal things. Don't just talk about the number of cases that are jumping up. Oh, it was two today. Oh, it's four tomorrow. Oh, it's eight tomorrow. Oh, this one got it. Oh, that one died. This, one. You know, being a messenger of doom and gloom doesn't help anybody. If you have to be alone, be a beacon of hope for everyone. Be a beacon of joy. You know, make everyone uh, feel happy about themselves. And if you can't, then just be quiet. Just be quiet. Stay in your own space. You'd be surprised that this exercise worldwide is going to cause so many people to deeply look at their lives. To see that, you know, I've been running around all these years making all this money and doing all of this. In one week, the stock market took it all away. All the money that I thought was going to be the security for my future. Now what? Now what? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? It gives you a lot of time. Since you can't go out uh, outside anywhere, this is the time to go in. This is the time to examine what it is that you hold dear and important. That you know at the back of your mind there is that fear. At any time, this virus can hit you. Right? You become aware of your own mortality. But you are here now. And this is what the masters teach us. That at all times, at all times, live your life as if today is your last day on earth. That this is it. That there is no future. So when you train yourself to live in the present moment, when you continually bring yourself into the present moment, you realize there is no fear of the future. There's nothing wrong with staying in one, in alone at home, reading a book, looking at the flowers, cooking something different. It's okay. Life is fine. The, the problem comes when you get into your head and being in isolation, I think, gives more room for that. Because all this while, you were busy. You filled your day with a lot of noise. There's somebody on the phone, there's a computer, you're on a conference call, you're doing stuff, you're, you know, people are calling you, there's a lot of noise going on, you're ordering a coffee somewhere, going out for lunch, you're doing a lot of things, a lot of noise, a lot of noise, a lot of noise. Now all that has stopped and now the only noise is the highway of your mind. And you have to come to terms with that. Now you have to see what am I thinking? What are the quality of my thoughts? 
Am I thinking that, oh my God, this is terrible. This is the worst thing that's going to happen. We're all going to die. You know, it's all going to come. This is what is the point of life. Or are you thinking, you know, let me just do something nice today. Let me, you know, clean the room for my mom. Kids are here. It's a lovely feeling when someone does, when you do something for someone else. You know, for a change. And I know many of you are, you've got your children, you've got, you've, you've got people together. Sometimes it's stressful because everyone is accustomed to a lot of privacy. You're in isolation. You want privacy. You know, a lot of demands on your time. And it's not working out the way you want it to be. Not every day. Not every day. So support each other. It's okay. It's okay. It's all, everything, everything passes. Everything passes. Change is the only thing that is certain. Today was not like yesterday. And it will not be like tomorrow. And not be like next year. And there is going to be a next year. And there is going to be a year after that. Just like there was a year before. You have to have that faith, right? You have to have that faith. You can't live your life thinking doom and gloom. I'm going to die. You know what? If you're saying that, that's great because that's the ultimate truth. You know, that's the only certainty in this world of uncertainty that we live in that we're going to die. And we try to avoid it at all costs. And this isolation is, an, is, a, is a Herculean effort at that to save the human race. There's a very deep instinct for survival that humans have. And for years, we have isolated ourselves from others. And it takes something like this to realize how connected we all are. Even in isolation. Your isolation is what controls the destiny of the, of the human race. What you think and what you believe similarly is connected with what other people think and other people believe. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions have vibration and your vibration is the same vibration of that of someone in Serbia, of someone in Africa, someone in Mongolia. Everybody is nervous, everybody is scared, everybody doesn't know what to do. How are we going to manage? What if we run out of toilet paper? What if I don't have enough milk to drink? Oh, I need bread. The fears, the panic that, that rises is very natural. And we need to calm ourselves first and instill that calm in others. And you do that by meditating daily. You meditate daily. You do that by breathing and meditating daily. There is no other there is no other. Nothing else can calm you. Exercise can only move your body and make sure your circulation is good. But you need something for your mind. When you sleep, your mind is fully active. The terrors come alive at night. It is only when you meditate that you are in charge of the thoughts that are coming. And then you see, you sit down and you, you see one thought coming saying, Oh my God, I can't, there's, there's a meeting tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I just don't feel like doing it. So, oh, that's a work thought. I'm going to put it away for now. I have to meditate. You get back to the meditation. And after a few seconds, another thought comes back. And, oh my God, how's it ever going to work out? Will we ever be able to go back home, back to our jobs? You know? Will everyone be alive? So, oh, that's a terror thought, a fearful thought, a mind story that doesn't exist. Let me put that away. I have to meditate. And that's how you catch, you break your thought cycles, your thought ladders before they become a downward spiral. You catch them as they're coming and you can only catch them in meditation. And then after meditation, when you come into real life, when you meditate and you meditate and you're aware of these thoughts coming and you keep putting them away into little baskets. You know, I, I put little baskets, my social anxiety, my success anxiety, my family anxiety. So many baskets I have, right? 
then in the daytime when that comes, you immediately know this is a family anxiety thing and you can just stop it right there. You can stop it right there. You have to become aware. Use this time to realize what you want from your life, where you want to go, what is your true purpose. Reach out to people, stay in silence. Silence is good. Silence is good because silence allows you to go deeper. There is nothing wrong with it. And just know that the more you are in isolation, the better it's going to be for the rest of the world. This is a good thing that's happening. Don't resist it. Don't resist it. It's not worth it. It's not worth resisting what's happening. Because you know what? Whether you like it or you don't like it, this is it. You have to stay indoors. And you might think that, you know, my, uh, my going outside for a little while is not going to harm anyone. I just want to, you know, uh, get something or I want to see someone. Follow the law in your area depending on how serious it is. You know, do what is responsible. But when you're home, be happy. Be happy. Just do things that make you happy. You know what? Happiness is your birthright. That's what you are entitled to. And you never realize that because you're so much in your outer world searching for that happiness. You forgot that it is your nature. It is your nature. It comes up when you're absolutely quiet. And it's not... People, a lot of people mistake happiness for pleasure. Pleasure is one thing. Pleasure is in the outer world. Happiness is a stillness. Is a stillness. It's a feeling that you get that everything is just right with this world. Everything is just perfect. That's why before you sleep, that's why before I sleep, I never watch a scary show. Because that's a perfect recipe for me at least to have a sleepless night. I always have a routine where I wash my face, I'll use my creams, um, Hamsa Botanicals, uh, my rose cream and my lavender body butter on my feet. Then I sit, I read something for 15-20 minutes, I put on a video, I always put on a video, a calming voice, it's either Eckhart or it's, um, I don't know, whoever I, uh, takes my fancy that night. And I listen to that right before I go to sleep. So I go to sleep with the feeling that everything is fine with this world. And then you just fall asleep. And that's the feeling that you have to get every moment. Every moment. That's the feeling that you have to get. That just now, with everything that it brings, this world is just fine. It's just perfect. It's all good. It's all good. It's all going to pass. And it's that vibration, that strong vibration that will keep you safe.